So guys, in today's lecture, we learn how to talk about experiences that we have had. Especially, we focus on the athletic experiences that we have had in the past. Uh, we are going to learn uh, the linguistic constructions that we use usually to talk about our experiences. We are also going to um, expand our sports vocabularies. Before we proceed um, into today's lecture, I would like to remind you that you can adjust the speed of this video to your liking. You can speed it up or slow it down so as you get um, as much from this video uh, as you can. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's start with reading the dialogue. The dial you can also listen to this dialogue on CD2 track 44. Today's dialogue is between Max and she could go or something like that look at this equipment i think there is something for every winter sport here i'll say look at this snowboarding gear have you ever tried snowboarding snowboarding no i've never done it have you i tried it once you are kidding when Last week when I went to Korea, what was it like? Was it fun? Oh yeah, I fell down a lot at first, but it was really cool. Did you try any other sports there? Yeah, we did some rock climbing. Have you ever done that? Lots of times. I used to go every weekend. The last time was in the spring. I fell and hurt my leg that's bad how about bungee jumping that's really scary now that's something i don't want to try now in order to ask other people about their experiences especially their um, athletic experiences we can use this linguistic instruction have you ever tried snowboarding have you ever tried snowboarding look at the linguistic construction have you ever have you ever so it is um what it is the the past uh, the present perfect tense have you ever tried snowboarding the answer might be no i've never done it have you no i've never done it no i've never done it or the answer might be yes. Yes, I have. Have you ever tried snowboarding? Yes, I have. In my opinion, this linguistic construction can also be used to talk about other activities in life, not only the sport activities or the athletic activities. For instance, you can ask in this way. Have you ever tried suing? Have you ever tried suing? Have you ever tried suing? The answer might be yes, I have. Or no, I've never done it. Have you? Or might be this. Have you ever tried drawing? Have you ever tried drawing? Yes, I have. Or no, I've never done it. Have you? Other possible answers might be I've done it lots of times. I've done it lots of times. Have you ever tried suing? I've done it lots of time. Have you ever tried drawing? I tried it last year. Have you ever tried suing? I tried it last year. Um, we have uh, in this... Uh, situation another possible answer which is i go snowboarding every weekend for instance now we have this exercise now in this exercise you have a number of sports uh, we have six sports you need to ask your um your partner about a certain sport i tried doing two of these you can also uh, uh, do the other ones uh, for practicing. Have you ever tried hang gliding? Number five is hang gliding. 
Have you ever tried hang gliding? The answer might be, no, I am scared of dangerous sports. You see, this is um, a, a possible answer. Uh, I told you several times over um, the last three or four lectures that in these situations, you can be as creative and original as you can. You do not have to stick to any linguistic instruction as long as um, it gives enough um, uh, information and is put in a correct linguistic um, uh, uh, structure, it is okay. You can be as innovative as possible. So in here, I try to be, um, to be creative with the answer. I asked um, him about the hang gliding, and that was my answer. Have you tried hang gliding? Have you tried hang gliding? No, I am scared of dangerous sports. I am scared of dangerous sports. Now, I tried something else, which is number one, which is mountain biking. Mountain biking. Have you tried mountain biking? Have you tried mountain biking? Yes, I have. It was so cool. Yes, I have. It was so cool. I think now you are um, well informed that in conversations we always go into details. Um, we do not stop uh, at a certain point, um, but we usually ask for more details so as to extend our conversation. So as to what? To extend our conversation. Now, in this situation, when we ask about athletic experiences, how do we stretch our conversation? Okay, how do we ask about details? Okay, uh, here you see this arrow, more details. When was the last time you went mountain climbing? The last time was in the spring. I fell and hurt my leg or hurt my leg. Now, uh, previously I did this. Have you tried mountain biking? Have you tried mountain biking? Yes, I have. It was so cool. So we can add another turn. Okay, when was the last time you tried mountain biking? For instance, you can say, it was last summer, or it was last spring, or the last experience was last spring. Let's repeat that again. Have you tried mountain biking? Yes, I have. It was so cool. When was the last time you tried mountain biking? It was last summer. Here I have written another example for asking about details. When, when was the last time you went on a road trip? As I said, we can use this linguistic instruction to ask about a variety of things. It is not confined to, uh, uh, to, athletic, uh, to athletic experiences, but we can talk about our act other activities in life. So here I am, to, uh, I am asking about a road trip. Road trip, I will insert a photo for a road trip when I start editing. When was the last time you went on a road trip? The last time was in the summer. Our car broke and it was bad. You see here another uh, uh, minute um, uh, details are added. Are added. Uh, okay, the last time was in the summer. Our car broke. You see the details. Our car broke, and it was bad. Now we have also this practice uh, for asking about more details. Okay, you are go not going to listen to it. You can you can do it yourself. Okay, I am not going to waste time on that. To be honest, so I am going to do one of these um, uh, points. We ha you have eight. I am going to do the uh, swimming one. When was the last time you went swimming? When was the last time you went swimming? I am going to write this um, uh, on, on like above this answer. 
Here we go. When was the last time you went to swimming? When was the last time you went to swimming? The answer might be the last time was last month. I almost got drowned. I almost got drowned. So where is the details in here? The details is in I almost got drowned. You can do the other ones. You can practice on this. Now, uh, here um, we have another um, way uh, to discuss um, our experiences to, um, to, to stretch the conversation as well. Okay, so you see in here, what was it like, for instance? Uh, um, have you tried uh, mountain biking? Have you tried mountain biking? Yes, I have. Okay, now you ask about more details, okay? You want to stretch uh, and extend your conversation. So you might ask, what was it like? What was it like? For instance, it was fun, or it was scary, or it was exhilarating, or it was exciting, or um, it was terrific, okay? So here, what do you, um, uh, how, um, you are talking about it. You are actually describing your experience with the. Uh, you are actually giving a, a quality for your experience, if I can put it in this way. Okay, so let, let's repeat that. Have you tried mountain biking? Have you tried snowboarding? Yes, I have. What was it like? What was it like? What was snowboarding like? It was terrific. It was terrifying. It was scary. It was exhilarating. It was exciting. Or you can talk about yourself, what um, you felt uh, while you were experiencing it. Okay, I was terrified at first, really. Uh, I was really scared, okay? Uh, it was really exciting, it was a lot of fun, or you can say I loved it or I hated it or something. Um, so in here you are describing what you feel towards your athletic experience. Now let's jump on this practice, practice uh, two. You have um, here a, uh, a table. Um, you are required to write um, sports that you think are exciting, dangerous, boring, terrifying, etc., etc. There is no etc. in here. Okay. Uh, I also going to to insert some pictures for for the sports that I have chosen, so as to add to spice up uh, the discussion. Um, for instance, what sports, in your opinion, are exciting? What sports, in your opinion, are exciting? Although I am not experienced in that department, but, but I can say that I think that surfing is exciting or boxing is exciting because you, because you get your adrenaline going, maybe. Okay, so in my opinion, surfing and boxing are exciting. What sports are dangerous in your opinion? By the way, as I told you over the last lectures, you can, um, you do not have to stick to what I have uh, done in here, okay? Because these exercises are uh, for you. You have to do them. But given the current uh, situation, I am doing them. Um, these are s j just a sample for you uh, to continue after me. So what sports, in your opinion, are dangerous? In my opinion, Slack lining is dangerous. I also going to to insert a picture for for slack lining. Okay, I think it, um, you see when somebody is walking on the line, like in in circus, especially. Okay, this sport is called slack lining, and it requires someone that is really professional. Okay, so in my opinion, this is a dang a dangerous sport. What, what sports are boring in your, in your opinion? What sports are boring? Okay, you are going to be surprised, but in my opinion, football is boring. 
I, I know a lot of people are going to come at me for um, for confessing that um, uh, football is boring, but in my opinion, it is really boring. I don't know why. I hate watching it. Um, but also, golf is boring. In my opinion, golf is so boring. It is for all the rich people uh, who have a lot of time to waste. I am sorry. This is my opinion, what I think. So what, uh, what sports are terrifying? I cannot imagine watching, um, watching it. Uh, bull riding, I think it is dangerous. It is terrifying. It is scary. And a lot of times, I think it is inhumane in, in, in a sense. I, 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 don't, I don't see what is exhilarating about bull riding. It's so disturbing. Okay. Uh, you can uh, hear in that um, what, what you think uh, sports, what sports you think are exciting, dangerous, boring, or terrifying. We listen to track 48 and we will come back. Talking about different sports they have tried. Number the pictures in the correct order. One. You need to go somewhere where there's a fair bit of wind. Most people start with a two-liner. We spent hours running up and down the beach with it first, and then, when we finally got to go out onto the water, I got the lines tangled up right away. Once you're up on your feet, it's fine. But it took me about two hours the first time I tried it. It was very frustrating. I spent more time in the water than on the board. I was totally exhausted. Two. You need to go up somewhere really high. You never get tired of that wonderful feeling when you lift off and you're suspended in the air, thousands of feet above land, with nothing but the sound of a gentle breeze. You feel so calm and peaceful. It's exhilarating. There's nothing like it. Three. You have to get up somewhere really high, like a bridge or a tower. Or people sometimes use helicopters or hot air balloons. You have a body harness on. There's a bunch of cords attached to your middle, and then you jump. If you're lucky, you can get two or three really good bounces. Scary? You bet. It scared the life out of me. Terrific. Now, after listening to track number 48, we have three requirements. The first requirement is that you number the pictures in the correct order. If you listen attentively, um, you would know that the um, uh, first one uh, is first, the second one is third, and the third one is second. Um, I encourage you to listen and find out yourself. Now, the second requirement is that um, you list the keywords that helped you identifying each of the sports. Okay, in my opinion, these linguistic, uh, these not linguistic instructions, but these um, words and the phrases help me identify which one is which. It's getting blurry again. Here we go. For the first one, um, the phrases that um, led me to the conclusion that it is um, are a fair bit of wind, okay, because you see, uh, you see in here it's like a balloon, liner, because you see these uh, lines uh, running up and down uh, the beach, okay, here is a beach, uh, got the lines tangled up Okay, because as I, as I said, these are the lines, and they are um, expected to uh, to tangle up, tangle up the way tangle, entangle, entanglement. Okay, I will write the uh, derivations of it on the screen. 
Okay, so this is, these are the phrases that led me to the conclusion that it is the first one. The second, which is the third picture in here, um, uh, the words that uh, the phrases are lift off, suspended in the air. You see this human being is suspended in the air, suspended in the air, nothing but the sound of a, a, a gentle breeze nothing but the sound of a gentle breeze so he expected to listen to the sound of the gentle breeze because he is above uh, the land so much okay now uh, you, you see the third one which is the second picture you see somebody is tied um, okay by the ankle by the ankles um, the phrases are bridge or the words and the phrases are bridge, body harness, body harness, okay, um, this belt that is around the waist, uh, body harness on, cords attached to you, cords attached to you, cords, okay, and we have the word jump, jump, okay. Now, we have the third require requirement, which is identifying the, the, the feelings of the people that are speaking in the, in the track. How did each person feel? How did they describe the experience? Uh, in my opinion, the first one felt, um, uh, felt that it was too much work okay, for, for this picture. He was discussing a lot of things, so, so in his opinion, it is too much work to... Um, to practice uh, this sport, too much work to practice this sport. So, uh, and he said that he is ex it was exhausting. So apparently he was exhausted. Also, we have um, for the second one, which is the third picture. He said that it was calm and peaceful, calm and peaceful. The third one, which is the second. Um, he said that it was scary. Okay, he was scared. Now, I am not going to do this exercise, but I am going to give you uh, something that is um, good to, uh, to keep in your mind. Um, there are uh, sayings or metaphorical constructions, we, we usually call them. Okay, uh, from sports, uh, we have a lot of metaphorical uh, instructions. Constructions. Okay, for instance, keep your eyes on the ball. Keep your eyes on the ball. Keep your eyes on the ball. It means focus. Focus. You see these sayings and these expressions that are used in everyday language. When you include such phrases in your language, uh, it would make your language um, looks very ordinary every day. Um, um, it makes other, others feel that you are um, in control um, uh, of what you are talking about, okay? So these uh, just spice up your language, okay? And give the impression that you have a good mastery over your foreign language. So when you say, keep your eyes on the ball, when you tell somebody, okay, you are, for instance, speaking with them, you are discussing something, and you say, keep your eyes on the ball. It means focus. Do not go astray. Do not talk about something that is not um, the main topic that we are talking about. So it means focus. Now, let's get the ball rolling. I said this in the very beginning of this lecture, if you noticed. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's get the ball rolling. It means let's start. Okay? Let's start. Yeah kick off uh, the ball and let's start playing. In here, it means let's start discussing or speaking about something or maybe uh, launching into something. The third one is you are moving the goal posts. You are moving the goal posts. You know the goal posts? Uh, I will insert, insert a, a picture for a goal post. It is one word, okay? One word, goal posts. Um, uh, when you say to someone, um, uh, uh, don't uh, move the, the, the goal post, it means do not, um, do not distract yourself, 
okay, in this discussion. Do not play tricks on me. Do not play tricks on me. We are talking about this. You do not uh, need to, um, to distract me about talking about other things that doesn't really matter. Okay, so the first one means focus. The uh, second one means, uh, means uh, start. The, first, uh, the, the third one means um, don't play tricks on me. Okay, that is every day. That's every day. Okay, that is everything from me today. If you have any questions, you know where to go. Um, uh, practice on uh, on um, the the rest of the exercises. And goodbye.